Okay, Facebook Live finally decided to work. Get Instagram Live going. It's, there we go. Okay, I don't know why it keeps doing that to even me. I forgot to set up a new one each week. Anywho, uh, welcome tonight, everyone. Thank you all for joining in. I truly appreciate it, as always. Um, I am a little bit behind because the same issue with Facebook. I think I figured it out finally, though. It's, it's a feature that is an automatic time um, of 7. If I'm, like, even one minute behind, it will knock it off. So, um yeah, that's that. Um, but thank you all for joining me this evening. If you all did not get a chance to check out the itinerary for the next couple of weeks, tonight's topic is how to prepare for hiring a driver. A few of you all have multiple vehicles. Um, a few of you all are about to start hiring your first driver. So I thought this was a good topic for us to cover tonight because you all need to know and get some tips on how to hire these people, okay? Um, these are vehicles that you all have invested your money in. This is time that you have invested into your business to get things set up. So you don't want any anyone coming in um, that may be negligent. You want to make sure you have some good tips and tricks on how to screen people and things that you should have set up in place before you even start hopping out there. Um, if you all have any questions, please make sure you save them towards the end because I'll get to those. I'm not going to give too much time in the beginning. Um, normally, I give wait time, um, but I want us to cover a lot tonight, and there's lots to cover, so I don't want to, you know, waste too much time. Um, just off the break, just going to do the introduction as always. If this is you all's first time joining in, thank you. I truly, truly appreciate it. Um, let me know in the comments how you all found me, if it was through YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. I'm trying to see which channel works the best. Um, I think it's Facebook, but I'm not sure. So you all let me know. Like, how did you all even come across me? That would be very helpful for me to know. Um... And yeah, I told you the topic for tonight. Also, tonight's live is the last public live. So if you are not a monthly member, you will not have access to any other lives going forward. I know we've been doing these public lives since February. Um, so going into the next season, uh, we do have, the group is growing, y'all. And so it's demanding more of me. And I still run my business full time as well. Thank thankfully, I do have a team. But when it comes to that NEMC girl, it's just me. So I want to make sure that I'm dedicating the time to people who are paying for the subscription and answering a lot of questions from outsiders and also paying a lot of attention to people who are not a part of the monthly subscription. Kind of hinders that sometimes. So just to avoid the interruption, just to make sure the live is going to be shut down just for monthly members. So if you're not a monthly member, make sure you check the site out to see if any of those options work for you. Um, some updates will be coming over the weekend, so you can check those out as well. Um, it's still going to be free content and free resources that are going out from me, of course. But some of the things that are exclusive, such as um, the monthly grant opportunities, the lives, the phone calls, you know, those are things that you get included with your membership. And you don't have that access if you're not a monthly member. So check out the website, www.thatnemcgirl.com, and it'll let you know what is included in the monthly membership packages. Um, all right. So jumping right into it. And if I cover anything or I go over anything that you have questions about, please let me know. Um, put the questions in the comments. I'm looking at the uh, Facebook comments, and I see that there's supposed to be comment here but it's not showing up so if you can hop onto instagram i'm not sure if his facebook is being delayed like it was two weeks ago um but i do see that there's supposed to be a comment here and i do not see that comment so um yeah let me know what that is all right so jumping right into everything uh when do you know it's time to hire uh and this is a great question because this is a question you want to ask yourself before you hire, if, even if it's just you behind the wheel, you want to know, okay, well, when is this going to be time for me to get from behind this wheel? Um, so if you have more than one vehicle and you have a vehicle that is sitting, you need to get that person, somebody behind that van. Uh, reason being for that, because you're missing out on money. That's the obvious, you know. So you may feel that you're not prepared to bring somebody on, but you are. Um, it's just the process of being organized and having your things set up, and we'll talk about that tonight. But in terms of your van sitting, that's a no-no. You don't ever want your vans to be sitting because that means you have money that's just not wasting out the door. 
Trust me, someone needs to be inside of that van. So um, in order to make sure somebody can be inside of it, somebody got to drive it, right? Okay, so yes, if any, and if your vans are sitting, you have multiple vans, make sure that you uh, get someone behind that. If your paperwork is not being completed in a timely manner and it's causing harm to the business, and what I mean by that is if you have invoices that need to be submitted and you're behind the wheel yourself and you're not able to take care of the invoices and they've been piled up for a week, two weeks, you know, that's money that however long it takes the contracts to pay you, it's just going to take them longer because you haven't submitted your invoices. So you want to make sure you're submitting your invoices pretty much daily, honestly, because that's going to make sure your money comes fast to you. Um, unless, unless you're working with a factoring company, you're going to be getting paid net 15, net 30, net 45. So, and also, unless you start off with a nice cushion, you're going to need that money. So, make sure you file your invoices. And if you're not able to do your paperwork, and that says a lot. That means you're too overwhelmed. And shortly thereafter being overwhelmed, you're going to burn yourself out. Um, if you're not able to market for private pay clients due to the scheduling, yes, you get these calls, you get these work orders, you see the dollar signs, right? But what about the quality of service that you're offering, number one? Number two, what about the outside of the broker work? What about making sure that you're still marketing for private pay? It's easy to get sucked into the broker rut because you are so consumed with taking broker clients and not paying attention to your private pay portfolio. So if you're not able to market for private pay due to scheduling, that's a problem as well. You want to make sure that you are the person that is out there doing that work, okay? Um, if you're not able to offer sufficient customer service because you are... Oh, there we go. I saw most of my comments. Now, hi, Crystal. Um, there we go. Uh, if you're not able to offer sufficient customer service because you are overwhelmed with behind the wheel, that says a lot. It, it should never get to that point because you're going to burn yourself out quick, quicker than what you really ever want to. And take this from experience, okay? So make sure that if you are able to, uh, you, make sure you're able to continue to offer good customer service and um, as well as operating the business. And if that means you stepping back and taking, you know, taking over the admin portion and hiring someone to do the behind the wheel task day to day, that's fine. But you also need to keep that in mind in creating the budget. That's a whole nother conversation. But you also want to make sure you have, you create that budget for when it's time to bring somebody on. You know, you want to think about these things from day one of you having your business and make a budget for it. You may not have that money now, but you're going to get it, right? So you want to make sure that you even start thinking about it, okay? All right. So before you hire the driver, there are some things that you want to have in place. Um, and some things you want to think about. Um, you want to make sure you have a clear description on what you want this person to do. Um, and this goes for admin or driver. You want to make sure you have a clear understanding of what it is that you want them to do. Yes, you may do these tasks with ease, right? Because it's your business. But no one is going to treat your baby the way you treat your baby. If you have a child, no one, you drop your child off at the babysitter's house, you have to give the babysitter instructions on how to care for your child. They're not going to care for your child the same way you would at home. So if you want that child to still maintain the same habits, the same schedule, the same eating, uh, the same eating diet they have, then you have to provide that babysitter with a list of instructions. Same thing with your business. Um, you, again, you can be a parent with ease, right? You wake up and you do it like it's, it's you can do it second nature. But when it comes to someone else caring for your business, which is your baby, they're not going to be able to do that same thing. So get in the habit, any little thing that you do that is an operational task, write it down. I don't care if it's how you answer your phone. I don't care if it's how you check your voicemail. I don't care if it is your daily task of, how you start the business day off. Write those things down because how you start the business day off and if it works for you, that's how you're going to want your admin person to come in and start the day off with your drivers once you pass that baton to that person because it's not going to be your job to do that. So if there's a certain way that you want your drivers to pick up your, pick up your clients because you pick your clients up that way, make sure you write those processes down in the notes in your phone, 
and then you can transfer it into your computer for a written document because essentially that's going to be your uh, your employee manual, right? You, you, you may be asking someone or paying someone to do that for you, and that's great. They can do that for you. But you still have to tell them what you want your business to look like on a day-to-day -day basis. So you don't know that unless you jot those processes down. So write out every process. Um, and that also helps you as well because if you get sick, if you have to go out of town, if there's a, fam a family member's funeral that you have to attend, you know, these are things, these are real life situations and scenarios. So who's going to be able to take over those tasks if there's not a written list of directions on how to do so? So just get in the habit of doing that. Um, and again, the smallest thing, like I said, answering the phone, checking the voicemails, write that, write that stuff out. Um, I want you to consider these things before you hire a driver. <clears throat> are your vehicles registered in your business name instead of your personal name? If your driver gets pulled over for speeding and that car, he or she is driving one of your vehicles that is registered to your personal name, then that could hinder you on your insurance, you know? So you want to make sure everything is registered to your business name. Um, how are your drivers going to fill up for gas? Are you going to have gas cards? Are you going to have prepaid gift cards? Um, and if you do have gas cards, how are you going to monitor the usage of the gas card? I give you a, a perfect example. I learned this lesson the hard way. We had gas cards, and we when we first started bringing on outsiders, um, when I say outsiders, I mean I, I had my friends or my family members that would come in town and visit that would help me drive. Um, and so when I actually started hiring people that I did not know, uh, I, of course, I had to get gas cards. So we got gas cards uh, through uh, Fuelman. And so I had a driver that took the gas card and was at the gas station trying to sell it for cash. And thank God there was a woman who was at the gas station, and she too also owned a transportation business with her husband. And uh, she saw that he had on his work shirt, and he was driving a company van with the magnet on the side that had the company number on it. And she called and let us know. Luckily, we have trackers on all of our vehicles, knew which driver it was. Um, we duped him and told him to stay where he was because we didn't know if the client was going to be ready by the time um, he finished fueling because she was only going to be in her appointment for a few. And so we called the police out there, <clears throat> let the police know what was going on. We retrieved the vehicle, got proof from the gas station that he had sold the car um, for some cash, and he was fired instantly. Um... Didn't press charges because it was a small amount, but it was a, a hard lesson to learn. Um, and it was very disheartening because you think like, okay, you give us one opportunity, they would do that to you, but it puts you in the mindset of, you know, CYA, cover your, uh, okay? So with that being said, think about that. How are, your, how are your drivers going to refuel for gas? And if so, if you are gonna provide a gas card, how are you going to track their usage? Um, <clears throat> with gas cars, you can put limits on the gas cars. We just did not have those set up at the time. You can have limits on each gas car where they cannot refuel over a certain amount or refuel for a certain time of the day. Um, so you can set it up however you want to set it up. It's very customizable. Um, also think about this. Are you letting the driver take the vehicle home? If so, what is your policy for that? And if not, what is going to be your base location? Where are your vehicle is going to be stored where they can come and pick the vehicle up for their shift the next day? Also, how are they going to get the vehicle the next day? Is it going to be parked in the parking lot? Is it going to be a lockbox for the key? Is it going to be someone there to meet them each day? Are you going to be there to meet them each day? Um, these are things to consider. Uh, how will you keep track of their time? How will they clock in, clock in and clock out? We use T-Sheets. I spoke about this before in a previous live when I talked about the softwares that you need for your NEMT business outside of tracking software. I'm sorry, uh, routing software. Um, the time tracking software is through T-Sheets, which is also connected through QuickBooks, which is also connected through our business bank account. So everything is in sync. If it's going to be a payroll expense that comes out of the business account, we know the T-Sheets automatically uh, calculates the time, or the hours they work for that week, times that by how much they make, and it tells us how much their check is supposed to be and if we want to do direct deposit. So it's very seamless of a, of a process, okay? So you want to consider that when you do start bringing people on as well. 
Um, how will you pay your drivers? Will you pay them uh, direct deposit? Will you get checks? How are you going to pay them out? How much will you pay your drivers? Are you going to give them incentives? Are you going to give them bonuses? Um, it just depends on how you plan on setting your company up. So consider all of those things before you hire somebody. I am taking a sip of water since I'm a little thirsty. Okay, sourcing. So where are you finding these drivers? Are you going to uh, a trucker? A truck driver actually gave this tip where he goes to uh, gas stations and posts flyers like at truck stops for drivers, which essentially is very handy because where else do truck drivers you know stop at the most? And a lot of truck drivers who are retiring or who know other retirees who no longer want to drive trucks but still love the field of transportation, they frequent that area a lot or those areas a lot, I'm sorry. And they, word of mouth is still the best form of marketing. So uh, that's a good a good space to go to. Of course, Indeed, um, I know you all may have gone on there. If you have checked it out this far, uh, they do charge, but they also have a free option. Um, it may try to deter you if, they, if, you, if you look at it and it says, oh, you're not going to get as many hits um, on your, your posting if you don't pay for the, the ad. It's not true. Uh, you can definitely get a good amount of hits with some good quality people as well. It, just all, it all depends on how you set up your job description. And I say that because in the world of 2023 with AI and everything, they only screen words. It's not like what you select and everything like that. You have to put specifically what you're looking for in the description and they'll weed out from there and filter what people have on their resumes when they submit. So uh, you just have to play games with it back. So it's definitely, the free option is definitely still worth it. So I would look into that as well. Um, if you have any your budget to pay for it, then go ahead and sponsor the ad. But if it ain't broke, don't break it. So if the, if the free option is there, again, the whole goal is to keep your overhead costs as low as possible. And softwares and systems are still an overhead cost. Um, outside of the commercial insurance and the car note. It's still an overhead uh, cost, okay? So, um, how soon in advance are you looking for your drivers? So, if you foresee that in the next couple of weeks that you're going to be needing an, an extra person or you need some additional assistance, then you need to like start posting today. Uh, if you have a, a couple of months, then you may have you know a week or two to get yourself together but you want to make sure that your post is posted for a significant amount of time so that you give yourself time to filter through the candidates that submit their information and their resumes to be a driver for your company you don't want to rush the process because people who apply just like we apply for jobs we can tell when the process is rushed and something may not may or may not be right and people can take advantage of that people can lose faith in the company they can have like a low confidence in it so you want to make sure that the process is a true process and it's not a rush process so foresee how soon do you need to hire and take advantage of that as well um okay so i'm getting to the end because i know how time is running um, screening process. All right, what is your screening process going to look like? Um, I, I recommend you having multiple screening processes before the final final round. And what I mean by multiple screening processes, I mean a phone screening. Okay, you call them on the phone. You pick their brain. What are they looking for? You give them information about the job them, uh, itself, uh, because you want to make sure that not only are they a good fit for you, but you are a good fit for them. So yes, they apply for the job. You put the job description up there, but People do not read, okay? People do not read, unfortunately, and they may skim over some things and you have some blatant information in that job description and they say, oh, no, that's not what I was looking for. 
Oh, no, that's not what I thought the job was. Okay, so you want to make sure that you doing that phone screening. You are giving them a description of what you're looking for, and you get an understanding of what they're looking for so that you make sure that both of you are a good fit for each other. Um, and then you want to do an in-person interview. How does this person present themselves? Because essentially, this is not a trucker job. This is not, you know, an Uber or Lyft where you can just come any kind of way. So people who are in the field of transportation, in my experience in different interviews, they sometimes come very presentable, sometimes they don't. It's hit or miss, you just have to depend. But just doing a phone screening is not gonna allow you to lay eyes on that person and you wanna see how do they present themselves because it's essentially, it's still customer service. Yes, you are driving, but you also are taking this person into their medical appointment. Depending on how you set up your business, they may be picking up children, you know? You don't want just anybody coming to pick up your kids. You wanna make sure they are presentable and they are presenting themselves in a professional manner. Um, again, I know some transportation industries are a little bit more lax, but this ain't it, okay? So keep that in mind. You still have a standard to adhere to. Um, and then lastly, I would do an on-the-road test. Um, you know, of course you give them a standard of what you're looking for, what you're checking for, for them for uh, behind the wheel, but you want to put them behind the wheel to, uh, sorry, I'm giving, getting a message on Facebook. You want to put them behind the wheel to get a feel for how do they conduct themselves behind the wheel and how do what is that level of customer service without you really having to say too much. Yes, of course they're going to be trained um, because they have to be trained on the company standards. But just like you go into a job and they give you a role play scenario, unfortunately we don't have buildings for people to go into, okay? They actually have to go out and pick up their clients. Okay, so you need to get behind that wheel with them or put your lead driver behind the wheel or have someone that acts as your lead driver, okay, a family member or a close friend or something, and let them know exactly what you're looking for. And, that's, and I say that in, in quotation marks because I know starting off, a lot of our budgets are not that big to hire an admin, hire a driver, and do all of these things at one time. So, and also, too, you want to create a boundary, a separation between your drivers and the owner I hate to say it but if it's not someone that you know or you know someone that you can truly trust and we'll get on that another day but i don't recommend you hiring your friends or family unless you all are starting a family family business together um but with that being said you are bringing somebody outside so the, the problems that i've gone through in terms of lack of boundaries are people not making sure that they don't call after a certain time a time at night you know, uh, taking advantage of certain situations like taking the vans home, vehicles home. So having that separation and that, and that, you know, extra person, that third person, that business manager, even if you can't afford that person yet, if you can have somebody step in and act as that person for the on the road test, that would be great. Um, once they get through those three steps, that final step of meeting with you as the owner, that's the last step. That, that should be the final step. Again, if you have no one to do the over the road test or on the road test, great. Then you got to do it yourself. But if you do, put that person in there. And if they, all they pass all three tests, the phone screening, the in person, and the on the road, the last step is meeting with you and offering them the job. And the reason for that is because you want to make sure, number one, this industry has a high turnover. I hate to say it, but it does. So you have to treat your people really well. You have to give them incentives to make them want to stay. So that you have a high turnover. With you having a high turnover and them actually being responsible for not only other people, but your vehicles that you are responsible for, um, if they crash it, dang, who's gonna pay for the insurance? Who's, who's premium gonna go up? Yours. Each month, they're gonna be, you might fire them, but they can't make you no money to pay for it, so you're still stuck with that extra bill. So you want to make sure that you are doing your due diligence to make sure that you find good people, okay? Um, it may seem like a lot, but it's worth it. Trust me, it's worth it. You don't want to skip steps and be stuck with something that you regret. Um, now, after you hire that person, and this is a separate video, we'll go over this in a separate live because we are coming to our time. Um, but would be the onboarding process. But I did want to offer you all some tips before we wrap it up on the onboarding process. And I want you all to consider this. What do you expect that to look like? How long are they gonna train for? Who's gonna train them? Where are they gonna train at? 
Um, are you going to just have them shadow for a couple of days and then actually take over and be behind the wheel themselves? Are you going to have them, um, what else I put on here? Uh, oh, are you going to have them do wheelchairs right off the break? Or are you going to have them, you know, do ambulatory one week and then wheelchair the next week? How are you going to set up your onboarding process? Um, how long are they going to be training for? Uh, I asked you who's going to be responsible for the training them. Um, how will you ensure that they pass training and it's up to your standards? Meaning, what kind of checklist or what type of criteria are you going to be grading them by? And they need a copy of that because it's not fair. It's like we were in school. We knew what we were being tested on, okay? Why shouldn't they know what they're being tested on? Um, it does not a cheat sheet or anything like that, but it's just letting them know what your standards are. So you want to make sure you have some type of grading system or point system and explain what that point system entails so they understand what they're being graded on or based on upon the training. Um, and then you also want to consider, like, what is a quarterly review going to look like? Because if anyone is working somewhere, and this is from us, before you're an owner of anything, right? You're still an employee. So for many employees, you want to know how are you doing at this job you're working at? Uh, you're working there and coming in every day and not getting any feedback. How do you know if you're an effective employee? So you still want to give that level of insight to your drivers as well. Um, whoever your sub is, and I say sub like uh, when I just spoke on, if you have someone that can step in and act as the general manager or the business manager or the office admin, that person needs to be introduced to the staff early on and sorry y'all think a mosquito was in here that person needs to be introduced to the person early on and they also um need to try to check in every once in a while so that it still seems like they work there for real okay because <laughs> eventually they're going to catch on that person doesn't really work there. But whoever's doing the quarterly reviews, if they can conduct those quarterly reviews for you, that's a good slide in for them as well. Um, but I say that because you want to start thinking about all the documents and documentation that you want to have set up. Because like I said, going back to the beginning of this, you want to, whatever you expect that person to do, you want to have it clearly written out and in a clear description. So that includes, once you get to hiring people, okay, and the onboarding process, that includes your paperwork, your employee handbooks, your operational handbooks, um, the, the uh, affidavits they have to sign. All of that is included, so you want to start thinking about that stuff. You don't want them to get hired and you say, oh, well, I'll give you this form next week. No, that's not how you do things or how you have been treated. When you get hired places, you do all your paperwork day one or within the first two days of, of being hired and you go from there so i want you to consider that as well um facebook i'm not sure if someone is on facebook and instagram but if you are if you could tell me if there's some comments because I, I i see that there are comments but i just cannot okay wait okay all right sorry nope i lied i had to refresh all right so those are my notes for tonight now I'm going to hop into the questions to see what we got going on. I'm sorry, you all. I don't know why Facebook is giving me a hard time. Okay, let me scroll on now. Oh, Rain. It's hi, Rain. You said you didn't see it on Facebook? Oh, yeah, we're on here. Um. Okay. The SEMA, you said, do you use a background check? If so, who? So, uh, we, so, for the for the onboarding process, we I get them to go get their, um, their background check from the local police department. And then for all full-timers who drive my vehicles, and within the first 90 days, they have to complete their pass certification, uh, wheelchair securement, um, a defensive driver, and so they also have to do the national background check and the 10 panel drug screening. So the national background check, we go through OcuScreen, O-C-C-U-S-C-R-E-N, <laughs> OcuScreen. Now for the local background check, we push that cost back on um, the uh, potential employee. So whatever that local county charges for them to retrieve their background, they have to pay for that. 
But for the national screening, you know, we pay for that. And the reason we do that is because 90 days, that's, that's a good probationary period. So is this person going to work out? Because we don't want to spend this money on these screenings and these background tests. And this person hasn't even proven to be, you know, a trustworthy employee. So the same way another company does it for their employees, we're going to do it the same way. Um... Oh no, Cherise said, I caught my driver wearing a bonnet when I popped up on her at a stop. Oh Lord, see, see, <laughs> that make no sense. I'm so sorry you had to go through that, but that's the scenario. That is a scenario. Okay, let me see here on Facebook, you know, on Instagram. Okay, I don't have any more questions here. I don't have too many questions on Instagram tonight. Let me see. All right, let me refresh my comments here because I see some more popping up on. <laughs> Rain is no. Uh, I'll give you a scenario. I had someone. Um, they, um, they, they brought their son to work. And they picked it. The way it was set up is that they had the lockbox code to get the key out the van. And they got the key out the van, had their son in the front seat. And the client that she picked up called the contract to complain because the son was in the front seat without a, without a seatbelt. I had no idea. I had no idea. So... Yeah, it, 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 it happens. People will take advantage, so you definitely have to make yourself visible and, you know, Cherie, like you said, pop up, you know, to just make sure that they're taking care of business the way they're supposed to be taking care of business because it will fall back on you and mess you all up. It will. Okay. Yes, things happen. These it, things happen that you would never expect because you would not do that, right? But unfortunately, everyone is not you. It's not everyone is not you. So yeah. All right, let me see. You got any other questions going on, floating around? Let me see. Let me refresh my comments here. All right. Well, I thank you all for joining in tonight. I truly do, as always. Um, again, next week for all the members, our uh, topic is how to uh, create your rate sheet. So I know that we had a lot of questions about that over the past week or two. So that's next to next week's topic. Make sure whatever questions that you think of throughout the week, whatever you pop in your head, you jot down in your notes in your phone so that we don't forget next week and we can cover it because I know that that's a topic that a lot of you all need help with so make sure that you jot those questions down so that we cover those next week as always thank you all for joining in the playback for this will be up so if you know someone who may have missed it it's okay tell them don't fret out um it will be posted shortly after okay so you all have a great evening everyone have a blessed rest of your week i hope you all have a great peaceful week okay make the best of it y'all i'll see y'all next time Bye bye